This episode of Prop 3D is brought to you by Autodesk. Hello everybody and welcome to Prop 3D. I'm Bill Duran and I'm here to show you some really cool projects using a 3D printer. Now, my wife and I have been playing a whole lot of Fallout 4 as evidenced by our recent Pip-Boy repaint video that we just did on the old channel here. And we wanted to show you not only how to make something from Fallout, because it's awesome, but also how to do some molding and casting. So, for this episode, we're building a Nuka Cola bottle. Ta-da! I was able to grab some screenshots right from my PlayStation 4 of the bottle from my inventory screen. And I took those and scaled them to the width of a real bottle cap. Then I printed them out and I was able to take measurements of that for my 3D modeling. There is a full video of me modeling this guy down below if you want to check that out. But here is the abbreviated version. I fired up 123D Design and I drew out the profile of the bottle shape and then I revolved it to make that big old solid. Then I sketched out the fins, just the outline of those guys, and extruded them to give them a little bit of depth. That got patterned around to make all four of the fins and everything got combined together and I added a whole bunch of fillets to smooth everything out. The cap was also modeled in a similar fashion. Then I split the bottle up into two pieces so that I could print it in two different parts. Now I could have turned the bottle on its side and tried to print it that way, uh, but circles like to be printed in this orientation. So I figured it would print better this way and it's really not that hard to put pieces back together once you've printed them separately. I also printed the cap all by itself. This got printed at medium quality because we would be finishing it a whole bunch and it took, uh, I wanna say about eight hours to print all the pieces out. We had to do a little bit of sanding to get the surface ready for molding. Uh, everything got sanded down and we filled in a couple of spots that were dinged up by support material. And then the whole thing got sealed using Smoothon's XTC 3D. This is a two-part epoxy resin that you mix together and brush all over your 3D print. It does a great job of filling in all of the uh, grooves left behind from your 3D printing. After a few hours, the surface was ready to sand. So it got several passes of sanding and priming until we were happy with the surface quality for molding. This is a basic two-part box mold. So the bottle was embedded in a big old hunk of non-sulfuric oil-based clay. You could also use a water-based wet clay too, if you like. Half the bottle was stuck in there and then the surface was sculpted to be nice and smooth and perpendicular uh, in a seam all the way around the bottle. Then we trimmed up the edges of the clay and added some walls to contain the silicone. These walls could be made out of foam core or wood. I used a thin plastic sheet. We also sculpted in a pouring spout as well as a bunch of registration keys to lock the two halves of the mold together. Then it came time to pour in the goo. For this one, we used Mold Max 30, which is a tin cure silicone. The two parts of the silicone were mixed up together and then degassed in a vacuum chamber. Now this isn't totally necessary. You can just pour the silicone from really high so that it's a thin strand and the bubbles will pop out of that. But if you have a degassing chamber, it really is handy to get your bubbles out of your silicone. The cap was done in a similar method. We just used a one part mold. We just glued part of a cup around there and poured silicone on it. For the bottle, it was ready to go. So we just dumped a whole bunch of silicone on that half and let it cure overnight. Also note that we added some chunks of other silicone in there. That's another tin cured silicone, even though it's a different color. Uh, they will bond and become one when they cure and it fills up a bunch of space. That's just an old mold that died and I cut it up and extended its life further. The next day we could turn the mold over, pull all that clay up, clean it up a little bit and pour in the rest of the silicone for the other half, but not before spraying in some mold release. That's right. This keeps the two halves of the mold from bonding to one another. Spray in the mold release, then you pour in the other half of your goo. Once it was all cured, I could pull the two halves of the mold apart, liberating the master inside there. Then I cut out some pieces of wood to hold the two halves together. Uh, again, you could use whatever sort of material you want here. And there you go. That's the quick and dirty on how to make a two-part silicone mold. Now it's time for casting. For this guy, we wanted it to be hollow. We didn't want it to be solid plastic. You could do that, but it would be a giant paperweight and it would waste a lot of material. So we decided to slush cast it using some urethane resin. 
There's a bunch of different urethane resins to use. We tried some like this uh, Smoothcast 65D. It cures white, so the brown tint in there turned it to sort of a lighter brown. We ended up going with Smoothcast 325, which takes tint much better. This is a really, really dark brown. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's also semi-translucent, so light shines through it kind of like glass. The goal being to not have to paint the bottle part at all, which is one of the many reasons we went with that type of tint and resin. With everything all set up, we actually pre-mixed all of the side B that we would need with the tint. This way, each of the layers that we pour in would all be exactly the same ratio of tint to resin. Then we mixed up one layer at a time, pour the layer in, slushed it around on the inside of the mold, and You'll see I added a cardboard tube to the mold to make it easier to roll around. Uh, and then we slushed it for about five minutes uh, for each layer until it started to set up. And then we can add the next layer. For this one, we had three layers of the resin in there to coat the inside, make a nice thick shell. Once it was all cured, we could pop this nice new copy out of our mold. I trimmed the pouring spout off of the top of it and I cleaned up the entire surface using rubbing alcohol. I also cleaned up the seam with a knife, but just a little bit. I wanted this to look like a manufactured bottle and you can always see the seam on those. So I just, just left it there. For the cap, we cast it in a similar way. We wanted it to be slightly hollow, but we actually dumped in a little bit of aluminum powder and make sure you're wearing a respirator for that. It's really bad to breathe in. Uh, put some aluminum powder in and then slushed in the resin. This leaves an outer shell of aluminum on your casting that can be buffed up like real metal. For painting this guy, all I had to do was the label on the front. So to make a stencil out of this, I used everybody's favorite thermoplastic. The Warbler was heated up and mashed down into the surface, into the grooves around the outside of the label there. Then I used my rotary tool to cut out an oval shape and then that whole piece could plop down right on top of the bottle, creating a nice stencil. Now this was for the red. Once it was all laid down, I could spray paint some red on there. I used Krylon Fusion for that. And then I needed stencils for the text. So I laid a bunch of pieces of masking tape on the bottle and I traced the outside of the label area. Then I ripped that off, laid it down on my cutting mat, uh, and I drew all of the text on there freehand. Now you could go in and cut it out by hand and have yourself a nice little stencil. I went one step further and uh, transferred that to my computer and cut it out with my vinyl cutter because I paid for that thing and I better use it. So once that red layer was dry, I could lay my stencils down on top of it and spray on the white layer. But before doing the white, I actually sprayed in some clear. This will fill in any gaps in your stencil so that the white doesn't bleed. Spray the clear, spray the white. Once that's all dry, you can peel it away and you have yourself a really fantastic looking label. Of course, for the caps, it's just got a red circle on it. So I made a really simple stencil out of a piece of masking tape and sprayed some more of that red spray paint on. Finally, I wanted this to be really shiny and glossy like a bottle. So I got some rattle can gloss spray paint, sprayed on a couple layers of that and let it dry. The very last touch is the bottle cap. I sanded the inside of the bottle cap and the top of the bottle and I super glued that right in place. And there you go, that is the Nuka Cola bottle, ta-da! I'm super happy with how this turned out. It looks like real glass, which is really, really cool. And now we have that mold so we can make more of these if we like. What's even cool about this stuff is if you hold it up to the light, you can actually see light going through the brown thin parts like it's real glass, which is cool. In fact, I can see some spots where the resin's a little, a little thin. Maybe should have gone with four layers. If you guys are following at home with this type of project, I highly recommend, even if you don't have a 3D printer, uh, trying to 3D model this sort of thing. That's a really cool skill set to have. Also, if you're new to mold making and you want to get into it, maybe try something a little bit smaller and get yourself some trial size kits of your silicone and your resin. I'll have links to all of that stuff down below. Uh, trial size kits are much cheaper than getting gallons of this stuff. And if you have a smaller project, it's a lot less expensive when you screw up. Thanks for checking out this video, you guys. We have a couple more other prop 3D videos you can check out along with some other really awesome uh, prop making and painting videos. We have the uh, Pit Boy video up there. You guys seem to like that one. So please go check that out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys on the next episode of Prop 3D.